Crimea is an area vital to both Ukraine and Russia, one whose control is caught in the middle of both countries after it was annexed by Moscow in 2014. NBC's chief international correspondent Keir Simmons and his team were the first to enter Crimea since the Ukraine invasion began, giving a rare inside look at life inside the contested territory. President Putin's warplanes targeting the besieged town of Bakhmut. Russia is destroying Ukraine's defenses there, President Zelensky said overnight. Again, calling for Western combat aircraft. His ultimate objective is taking back Crimea. In October, an explosion rocked President Putin's prized bridge to the peninsula. Putin blamed Ukraine's special services. Kyiv never admitted responsibility. We crossed into Crimea by train, across what the United Nations calls Ukraine's internationally recognized border. This is where that explosion hit this bridge last October, at around this time in the morning. The bridge was fully reopened just last week. Inside, the territory is teeming with Russian soldiers. And if Ukraine plans to take it back with force, many civilians will be caught in the middle. 2.4 million people live here. In Sevastopol, large numbers support Russia. Is Crimea Russian or Ukrainian? Russian, Crimea Russia. is Russian. Da. Of course Russian. President Forever, this 73-year-old Braskovia Baranova tells me. There's a sign for a bomb shelter over ah, there. Ukrainian. So what, she says. Are you frightened? No, she says. If it's needed, we'll just go to a bomb shelter. If we don't defend our motherland, we will become slaves, Ruslan Nalgiev says. The streets are lined with propaganda. The West doesn't need Russia. We need Russia, this poster reads. But the UN has accused Russia of many human rights abuses in Crimea. Olga, who is afraid to give us her last name, tells us all mothers, both Russian and Ukrainian, weep for their children. I can't speak about it without tears, she says. And joining me now is NBC News chief international correspondent Kira Simmons from Crimea. Uh, Kira, President Zelensky vowed on Sunday to take back Crimea. How realistic is that? It, the, the people there whom you spoke to view themselves as Russian. That's right. From those people that we spoke to, it seemed unrealistic. And, Andrew, I want to show you some new picture that we uh, filmed yesterday at the port of Sevastopol. Now, this is the closest that any U.S. news crew has got to the Russian Black Sea fleet in many, many years. What you're seeing here are President Putin's ships at that port. Uh, why it's important is because uh, Vladimir Putin will be determined to defend, to defend that port, to not have it uh, taken away from him. Uh, he may well do pretty much anything to try to achieve that. And, and the reason why is because it is so strategically important to Russia. But here's the irony. Uh, the fact, uh, since he launched that uh, invasion a year ago in Ukraine, the Ukrainians now will be determined not to have the Black Sea fleet there, potentially threatening their uh, coast for years to come. So it is a very, very dangerous standoff that suggests that this could pan out for some time to come. It's hard to see how you reach a negotiation over that. And there in Sevastopol, Andrew, I've got to tell you, I mean, there was just military everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Uh, it is a military town. So again, when, for example, Victoria, New Victoria Newland talks about, at the very least, we want Crimea to be demilitarized, I found myself standing there and wondering, how on earth does that happen? And, Kira, you know, we keep hearing that Crimea is exactly what NATO and the U.S. fear Zelensky will try to go into with long-range weapons, maybe even with those F-16s if he ever were to get them, which I don't think he will, not in the near term. They're worried that that is a tripwire for mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin. What is your take on that? That's what they are worried about. I mean, that, we're standing in the place that has uh, Jake Sullivan, for example, really worried, Andrew. And the reason why is because the idea that NATO weapons might kind of land on this, this place, uh, potentially kill Russian civilians, uh, and that that would be a, an escalation. But 
by the way, this is an enormous challenge. Mark, General Mark Milley has, has made this clear. This is an enormous challenge for the Ukrainians. Here's why. Let's just give you a close-up look at that, that bridge behind me there. That's how we travelled uh, into uh, Crimea. It is open now. It is one of only two ways to get here. The other is a land bridge over to the northwest of here that is very, very much exposed. So with land forces, how do you take Crimea if you are the Ukrainians? That's why General Mark Milley says he thinks uh, that it will be extremely difficult for the Ukrainians to push the Russians out of here. We, we have seen uh, substantial defences around this bridge behind me that is uh, President Putin's pride, of jo pride and joy, uh, Andrea, and, and that's not surprising. But uh, as we saw in, in my piece, I mean, we also uh, know that the Ukrainians have wanted, or at least they haven't admitted it, but it's it seems pretty likely that it was the Ukrainians that they've wanted to target uh, that bridge behind me there. Again, if you take down that bridge, how do the civilians leave? These are very, very difficult questions if we do get to the point where Crimea is uh, a, a, an objective that the Ukrainians realistically uh, can look at militarily. Well, Keir Simmons, I mean, your reporting is amazing. Uh, last week in Georgia, showing how tank sanctions were being evaded with those Dodge Rams. I'm still talking about that piece. And here you are in Crimea. Thank you. Thank you so much.